Um, so this recipe will be uh, white asparagus and elderflowers um, and some Camila oil, uh, which are all um, products that are very, very common around Berlin, especially white asparagus has a long tradition. Uh, people travel to the region of Bielitz, south of Berlin, just to eat white asparagus in the three months of the year that we have it from end of April to uh, the 21st of June. Um, and it's, a, it's just a produce that is, I think is the most expensive vegetable we have. We have. It's very valuable, it's very hard work to grow it. Um, there's like kind of an industrialized way to grow it, uh, so it grows faster, so you can sell it earlier. There are um, a lot of animals and insects that want to eat asparagus, so you have to protect, protect it well as a gardener. And uh, we found uh, one farmer who does this a, as a hobby, kind of. Um, mostly he grows like tons of potatoes, um, but for uh, as a side hobby, he has a little tiny garden with uh, white asparagus that he takes very good care of, and that grows very slowly and turns out sweet and tender. Um, so when you buy um, asparagus in a trading company, normally uh, you get like the, the bigger ones, the, the big fat ones that maybe look like these, um, and they're the most expensive ones, and the small ones are very cheap, but that's not necessarily the value that we're looking for. We're not looking for um, size or shape, we're looking for um, if, you wanna, if you bite into a raw one, would you want another bite? And if you want a third bite and a fourth bite, that's probably good asparagus. Um, and that depends mostly on how it's grown and how long it has taken for it to grow. Um, also because of the very short season that it has, it's a very interesting product to preserve because it will always send you right back to spring and early summer whenever you eat it. Um, everyone that has had it in that time and has had the, has created memories of eating asparagus with their family or has like traditions eating asparagus with potatoes for um, those weeks will be thrown back uh, into that time. Because that is such a special product for um, everything that we do, as I said earlier, we just we just focus on that product and we just serve it basically as it is. And we're gonna pickle it uh, in an elderflower stock, and um, then just we'll just basically put on a on a plate and garnish it with pickled elderflowers and some oil, and that's it. Also, one important thing that I usually do is. I either pickle things in their own stock, so I have a variety of things that I can still combine them with, so I don't put all kinds of spices in the stock or things to uh, vary the taste. Uh, I keep it very simplistic. Or I combine them with one other taste of a taste that is also common in that season. Um, for example, elderflower. They, they um, blossom around the same time, probably mostly in the later period of the asparagus season. Um, and nature usually works that way, that if you put two things together that grow at the same time, they usually taste amazing. Not only nature works that way, but also people work that way because taste is mostly created around memory and how you treated those memories. Um, and you know, since you eat them at the same time, it's easier to have a condensed memory around it. And that's what we want to do. We're playing with memories. Okay, so I'll just show, show how to uh, peel an asparagus properly, which is an important thing to do if you want to deal with it. Um, the first thing you want to do is cut off the, the bottom end uh, because it's not edible anyway. It's usually kind of hard. And um, then you want to peel it and you want to peel it carefully. So you get all the peel because it's uh, really, even after it's cooked, it's not edible at all, unless you have very, very young asparagus. Um, and then you want to check it again and make sure you don't have any peel left. And make it kind of round, so it doesn't look like a kindergartner peeled it. Uh, and that's the most important thing to do, which is easy to do with one asparagus. But if you do it with 10 kilos, you have to keep your focus up because um, Everyone who's eaten asparagus will 
you know, every guest has experience eating asparagus and they will um, look for that. They will complain if you don't peel it correctly, especially, especially German people are very specific with that one. Um, then we're gonna, um, we're gonna boil, boil the um, elderflower stock, which, which um, consists of elderflowers and some, some verjus and some salt and water. Um, the recipe um, will vary. I try to keep it as little sour and little salty as possible. Um, um, so it's not overly, um, so it's a kind taste, but it still has to be, um, you know, has to preserve the, uh, the liquid. So it has to be a mixture of tasty and safe. And we're just going to bring this to the boil and um, put the asparagus in a jar. And then when it boils, we're going to put it on top. Oh, that one's too long. That's not, that can't happen. Yeah. So the stock is boiling, it's boiling hot, which is important. Um, and I'll just pour it in and make sure I don't fill it all the way to the very top, but maybe only th only under this line, because the asparagus will lose water when it's uh, when it's being cooked, uh, and it will still fill up a little bit. And I close it. Make sure it's all the way closed. Only touch the glass up here, not on the lid, but up here. Down here, it's hot. And I'll put it in the steamer for, um, I would say 25 minutes, maybe. 20, 25 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. Um, if you don't have a steamer or you're at home, you can use a, like a big pot with um, a cloth in the bottom and just boil it in there. Make sure the water goes of the pot goes all the way up to here. Um, you can just um, carefully boil it for 20, 25 minutes. We'll have the same effect. You can just, just can't do as much at the, at the same time. 